Hello, everybody, and welcome into this week's episode of UMass Sports Weekly, your number one source for all things UMass sports. I'm your host, Tommy Kaluti, and let's jump right in. First off, we'll break down the football team's heartbreaking loss to Bowling Green State University, and we'll preview the homecoming game this weekend against Kent State. Then, God seemed to be in the works today, uh, this weekend as the men's soccer team went 1-0-1 this weekend. Alex Francisco checks in with us and we'll talk about some field hockey. And then my favorite dual reporter, Philip Sanzo, checks in with some women's soccer. we got a lot to get to today. Stay right there. Cue Victor Cruz because this is UMass Sports Weekly. This is UMass Sports Weekly. Welcome back. It was a tough weekend as the Minutemen fell to Bowling Green 62-38. Even though Blake Thro Thronapple threw for over 400 yards and Tajay Sharp caught another 150 yards in receptions, it wasn't enough. I'm here with Xander Manning. Xander, I thought the team had some momentum coming off of that win last week against FIU. Tell me, what happened in this game? Well, you said it yourself. This team had some very good, had some good play from Thronapple, some good play from Tajay Sharp. Nothing new there, but... Where was this defense? Where did they go? It's almost like this defense went on a vacation. I am ashamed of this team. I thought they played some great defense against FIU. I thought it was going to carry into this week. But apparently it doesn't. And it was just a struggle game for them. The special teams wasn't that bad. I'll hand it to them. They did very well. They hit all their extra points, hit the field goal, did what they needed to do. Offense was good. They just didn't have enough support. Even though they scored the season high 38 points, just they struggled. I mean, Xander, going into the next game, we, we talk every week. Fronapple and Sharp have been great. I mean, Plus I think Fronapple, what was it, four TDs, two picks? Something like that. Tajay Sharp had another 10-plus reception game. I mean, what can we look, besides those two, I mean, I'm sure you're going to talk about them, but besides those two, what can we look forward to against Kent State? I mean, we'll see. I mean, the momentum isn't, I wouldn't necessarily say the momentum's gone necessarily, but it's definitely diminished after this. It's a heartbreaking loss against Bowling Green. Last year, the Minutemen lost to them 49-42, to and it was because of a drop running. They were running the ball, and they dropped the ball and fumbled it. That was their problem then. But, I mean, the momentum still could be there, but it's definitely down a little bit. What we have to look forward to, I mean, these two teams are pretty even. I got to say, and if we can pull up our graphic here about this, look at the points scored between the two teams here. Minutemen have scored... 126 points this season so far. And uh, I'll admit, it's not, very, it's not bad, but it's not going to be necessarily good. But look at Kent State. They've scored 111 points. Mind you, they also went up against two tough opponents in Temple and Notre Dame. Of course, yeah. And they still won a few games there. Of course, not in those games. But they had won a few battles in those games, if yeah. you want to correct myself there. But they got a lot to look forward to offensively in this game. I think it's going to be a good game offensively. So, Xander, we talk about it every week. What does the team need to focus on in practice? What do we need to look at for this team to key in on, fix, and go out there and give us a win on homecoming? To quote Liam Byrne here, our guy out in Ireland, defense, defense, defense. they got to focus on this defense, especially that secondary. The secondary's had a lot of trouble this season. They've let a lot of passing plays happen. They've let a lot of running, game, running plays happen that they really didn't need to. They've let teams like Notre Dame pick up fourth and 13s, or third and 13s, excuse me when they did not need to at all. And they got to work on that defense, that secondary, not let them break through that. So, Xander, I want to finish off your segment. I mean, it's going to be tough, but offensively, how do these two teams stack up? What do we want to look at? What do we want to see? These two teams, they, they stack up pretty well, I got to say. But they stack up pretty evenly, but the Minutemen definitely have the edge. Can we look at the, let's pull up the graphic here, looking at the offensive yards or points here. Minutemen have, they've run the ball pretty well. They've got 2,296 2, total yards. Kent State with 1,800. Minutemen's got the edge here, obviously, in points per game. But Kent State's got the record advantage. They're 2-4. and four. The Minutemen are 1-4. and four. I mean, they're pretty well stacked up, but 
Kent State hasn't played too many tough teams. The Minutemen have. I'd give the Minutemen the edge in this game, but I'm not going to say anything. Don't want to curse anything. Well, thank you very much, Xander. I mean, look, this team's good. They've proved it time and again. They just got to be able to close out games. I think that's what we got to key in on. Or they just got to start early, get those cylinders firing. Get on the board early. Well, thank you very much, Xander. We'll be right back to talk a little bit of men's soccer with Dr. Dennehy. Stay tuned. Local rivals clash as the UMass Minutemen hosted the URI Rams this past week. The Rams with the first strike as sophomore Dante Lamb puts on a move and buries it in the back of the net for the Rams to go up 1-0. The Minutemen room respond in the second half as Ty Goncalves puts a phenomenal through ball to Mark Morris who puts it in the back of the net for his first goal of the game. Later in the second half, Goncalves would hook up with Morris again as he blasts this cross, somehow finds Morris's head who puts it in the back of the net for his second goal of the game. Things were looking good for the Minutemen as they would go up 2-1. to one. Tensions ran high in this local rivalry matchup as there were five yellow cards distributed between the two teams in the second half alone. URI desperately trying to get back in this game with this corner as UMass clears the initial attempt, but Dominic Richard blasted from 30 yards out top right, a nip that could possibly be the goal of the season. With the score tied 2-2 in the 90th minute, freshman Sam Asamoa does a phenomenal job drawing the foul here. The referee comes and points to the spot. Mark Morris steps up with ice in his veins, scores off the rebound to complete his hat trick. This truly was a career game for senior Mark Morris. And with that, the Minutemen would take home their first A-10 victory, 3-2. Welcome back. The men's soccer team won and tied a game this weekend against both URI and St. Louis. Great weekend for the team, and Dr. Denner, he's got a good report for us. I'm going to bring him in right now. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Fantastic. Phenomenal. So, Tim, it's a win. Yeah, absolutely. That's one win, everybody. One. We got two in the season, but that's one for the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. What did you see differently in the URI game that allowed the Minutemen to get the win? Now, see, Tommy, I saw a whole different level of intensity from this team now with that, it looked like the United States-Mexico game. I mean, it was just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, there were five yellow cards distributed between the two teams in this game, and it, that really reflected how physical it was. And there were a lot of iffy calls that really could have been cards. So I think five was kind of a low ball. I think the official did a really good job. But uh, it was excellent first half. We outshot URI 8-5, which is extremely good. That was the first time we did it on the season. And... Um, we possessed the ball extremely, extremely well. Uh, that was a big problem with us. That's what I saw that we did differently. Um, in all the games prior, we could not get the ball into the offensive. This time, we stayed in the offensive. UMass stayed in the offensive pretty much for the entirety of the first half. They went down one nothing, and what really impressed me with the Minutemen is they did not let that get them down. They came back. They scored two goals to go up 2-1 in the second half. URI tied it up, and in the 90th minute, Mark Morris. Who else but the team captain? Mark Morris gets a PK. Great dive by Sam Asamo. It was actually a very iffy call. Looking at the replay, it definitely was outside the box. Sir, you missed one, but thank you. And PK off the rebound, put it in. 3-2. UMass victory. UMass victory is something we haven't seen much of, but no. we're definitely glad to see it. It seems like a great game. So, Tim, I'm going to move on to the next game. We played St. Louis. Yes. It's a tie. Yes. It's definitely a positive considering the way the season's gone. Yes. Is that a good result for the Minutemen or something we should be concerned about? Phenomenal. Phenomenal result. I mean, St. Louis is one of the more talented teams in the A-10. Now, their record does not really reflect that, but we've had some serious, serious problems with St. Louis in the past and past seasons. We not only kept up with them, but we actually completely outplayed them in the first half. We outscored them 8-3 to three the second time that UMass outscored their opponent in the first half. And... Their defense played absolutely phenomenal. They stepped up big time. This new goalie in net for the A-10s, George Bacara, he only had to make three saves of the entire game. Zero goals and three saves. Those were the three saves that the Minutemen needed. If they can just keep the ball out of the back, it'd be good. I mean, it's, it's not asking much, but it's, it's definitely something you got to ask. So, Tim, I mean, where do the Minutemen stand in the A-10? We saw it. The season started off rough. We've seen them surge, though. They're, they're definitely on the upswing. What can we look forward to? Yeah. Well, I mean, if we take a look at the standings here, I mean, they're sitting pretty right now. They're sitting pretty in fifth place, and that was absolutely huge for this team at the current moment. I mean, I was, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I like to consider myself an optimistic person, but I was thinking, like, maybe 11, 12, maybe even 13, but five. Generous, 10. Absolutely. I was trying to be generous with 10, and 
Now my foot is just completely just wedged in my mouth because fifth play, that is fantastic. Going forward, if they continue to play at this level, uh, I really think that we can make a run at the A-10s. Um, they changed around a lot playing in the A-10s. They changed their keeper. Now they have George Bacara back there, who has been, like I mentioned before, he's been playing very well. But not only that, but in the three A-10 games this season are the only times that they've outshot their opponents in the first half. That is a really good time to start turning on your offense when you get in division play. I'm really, really excited going forward in this game. We have St. Bonaventure, who is in last right now. So, you know, if they can keep it consistent, we should see another W. I'm very confident. I'll tell you, that's definitely what we want to see. I mean, I know who George Bacara's favorite Civil War general is. Who is it? Stonewall Jackson. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> that's his favorite. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you. We'll be right back after this to talk about the skidding women's field hockey team. Stay tuned and do not touch that dial. Hey you Mass fans, this is Brittany Collins and it's trivia time. Tonight's question is on the hockey team. Last night they beat what school coming back from 3-0 to win 4-3 in the last period? Was it A. Colorado, B. Michigan, C. BC, or D. BU? Tweet your answer to at UM Sports Weekly for a shout out on next week's show. Welcome back to the show. This weekend, the Minute Women field hockey team had two tough games against St. Francis and Lock Haven University, both resulting in losses. Coach Carla Tagliente was not happy, and either was our uh, field hockey analyst, Alex Francisco. Alex, how are you? I'm doing well, Tommy. How are you? I'm upset. I mean, Alex, <laughs> this was a rough weekend, two losses. We don't expect this from our field hockey team. Tell us what happened. You're right. Um, the girls went down to Pennsylvania this weekend for two Atlantic 10 conference Usually games. Usually a nice trip. Right, but it did not go the way... They would have expected, I guess. Um, Friday, the girls lost 2 nothing to Lock Haven University, putting Lock Haven now 3-2 and in conference play. Um, we'll pull up this graphic, and you can see how the teams stack up. Sunday, they were upset one nothing by St. Francis, which moved St. Francis to 1-2 and in A-10 play. And Tommy, before this weekend, UMass has never lost to either of these teams. I mean, that's, that's definitely a telling stat. I it's just something, uh, covering the team last year, I didn't see. And this team is definitely struggling, Alex. I mean, there's obviously a lot to point to, but what specifically went wrong in these games? You know, they really missed Izzy Delario on offense this weekend. I'll tell you that. Um, Friday, they were outshot 8-4. to four, And Melanie Crouch had three of those four shots. Um, Sunday, the offense was a little better. They were still outshot by Fr St. Francis 11-10. to 10. But they, were, they did take more shots than on Friday's game. Um, however, they just couldn't find the back of the net, unfortunately. And again, Melanie Crouch took the majority of their shots. Um, I'd really like to see more from girls like Nicole Miller, Sarah Hawkshaw during these games. But um, just the offense just couldn't break anything through. You know, you sound like Tim trying to dig out as many positives that may, may or may not be there. <laughs> but... I mean, we, we, we try to do this, we try to focus on the positives. Who is the player of the week? Who stood out? Who maybe might be able to get these girls back on track for next week? I'd love to surprise you and tell you Sam Carlino is my player of the weekend. Um, you know, without her six big saves this weekend, this could have ended a lot worse for these girls. But um, I have to commend Melanie Crouch's effort. For an office that really didn't accomplish much, they looked pretty slow out there. She was the only one consistently firing shots at the net, and um, you just got to give the girl props. Now, the Minute women haven't scored a goal in three games now. I believe those three are all losses. You're right. <laughs> but um, now their next three games are at home, and hopefully this week the girls in practice can figure out what went wrong, just refocus a little bit. And hopefully the offense can build their confidence back up. I mean, like you said, St. Joe's and Lock Haven are teams that they beat year in and year out. So hopefully we're not stumbling on a trend that's going to continue. But thank you for that, Alex. All right. When we come back, Philip Sanza will join me and we'll be talking some women's soccer. Don't move. Hey, UMass fans. This is Brittany Collins, and we're here with Anna Woosley on the tennis team for a quick game of this or that. Are you ready? Yeah. Alright, starting in three, two, one. Baseball or basketball? Basketball. England or America? England. The hot dogs or hamburgers? Hamburgers. Coach Dixon or Coach Whipple? Dixon. 
<laughs> there we have it with Anna Woosley on the tennis team. On a beautiful day, we're closing out here at UM Sports Weekly. Go UMass! Welcome back to the show. Now, I'm here with Phil Sanzo, our duel reporter, doing a little less duel this week, just on women's less. soccer right now. So, Phil, the women's soccer team, like we said, hoping they can make a run, get into the A-10 tournament. Absolutely. What went down this weekend? We had George Mason and George Washington. We got the double G. What happened? Well, Tommy, they suffered two losses, but... You kidding me. <laughs> it's all right. There is still hope. We'll get to that in a little bit. Oh. <laughs> well, having these two losses, George Mason and George Washington, extremely tough teams to beat for the UMass men and women. George Mason and George Washington are right now top two of the top four teams in the A-10. So you had to go into it with some expectations to come out with losses. They weren't terrible losses, Tommy. They lost, they lost to um, George Washington about to, um, one nothing. So that was the second game on, on Sunday, I believe it was. Lost to George Washington, one nothing. Just had no offense in that game. Jo George Washington shut them down. Only had seven total shots. A big part about that game, though, they had 12 fouls and compared that to George Washington's seven. So they kind of shot themselves in the foot a few times. George, George Mason lost 2-1 in overtime. They had the lead going into the second half. Oh. Ten minutes away. They were ten minutes away. And then That one Cass, hits me right here. Tell me. Me too. Jackie Bruno got our first goal. That was the one goal. UMass guy, like, Jackie Bruno's back. She's going to win us the game. Like, the heavens were all opening up. All the time up. she does it. Then Cassie, Cassie Babin lets in the game tying goal. Ten minutes left in the game. And it's like, all right, going to overtime, though. They can do it. It's like 53 seconds in. Bam, game's over. George Mason scores. Ball game over. UMass loses. Nah, it hurts. It's definitely a painful loss. You know, Cassie what hurts the most is being so close. <laughs> that, I, believe that's, I believe that's a they Rascal Flats right. quote. They were right. They were right here, they just couldn't get it in. Cassie Babin's been great all year, slipped it up, but you know what? Two losses against two good teams, not the end of the world. They'll move on from it. I mean, definitely not the end of the world. We've seen, no, we've no. seen this team come back in. Good teams put up Absolutely. good games, so at least it was a fun game to watch. So, Absolutely. Phil, we're going to look forward to another hopefully good team and another good game, Davidson. What are we looking for in that game? Davidson, believe it or not, Tommy, they're not as good as George Mason and George Washington. Well, they're actually in the bottom of the division. If I do the math correctly, you said George Mason and George Washington were two of the top four teams. So if one of them was number <laughs> one, then there's no way Davidson was as good as them. Absolutely not. Davidson's actually second, third to last right now in the A-10. That's logic for they're you. They're one for three in the A-10 right now, and it's not looking good for that team, but it's looking great for the men and women because they catch a break. It's like a Christmas for them right now. So you get Davidson, URI, and both teams are at the bottom of the pile right now of A-10. Huge, huge series for the UMass men to take advantage, get into the top eight teams, because right now they're sitting ninth. They're sitting ninth in the A-10. You gotta be in top eight if they're gonna make the tournament. So they gotta get that one spot. They gotta take advantage of it this weekend against URI and Davidson. All right, Phil, I mean, URI and Davidson, I can see them now, the UMass vultures just circling the bodies. Absolutely. Hopefully they can key in on that. Phil, let's get down to business. I mean, what do they have to do to make the A-10s? What does this team have to do to get themselves back on track? Well, like I said, Tommy, they need to take advantage of these easy games. Easy teams are a great way for a better team to build confidence and get some wins up on their, in their, in their uh, scoreboard. And the players we need to look at, Jackie Bruno. She came back here. She showed what she could do. We know what she could do. She came back here. We need her to step up and be the player that she is. Obviously, she's coming off Lyme disease. Not an, easy, not an easy illness to come out back from. The fact that she came back is alone amazing. So we're gonna hope we, if she can get hot right now, definitely helps the men and women's, ch men and women's chances. Cassidy Babb is another one. She's been great all year in goal. All year, first year as a full-time starter in goal for the men and women. She's been fantastic. But towards the end of the season, you're starting to see her drop off a little. We saw it in the George Mason game. We're seeing it now. We don't need, women cannot afford for that to happen. I know she's young and she's not, she's not experienced, but they need Cassie Babin to really keep it going with her, keep it rolling with her normal, with how she's been playing all year. They can get that done, then definitely men will have a shot, shot to get into that A-10 tournament. Well, thank you very much, Phil. Unfortunately, fans, friends, family, that is gonna do it for UMass Sports Weekly. I'm Tommy Kaluti. Remember to follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, like our page on Facebook. We have a Snapchat. I tell you about Periscope every week. That's right, you can see me. I can see you. Periscope. Try it. We'll be back same time next week, Tuesday, UVC TV 19. This 
is UMass Sports Weekly. Have a good night.